Welcome, beloveds. Welcome to a wonderful dose of the frequency of ascension. My subject today is the solar eclipse, new moon or new moon solar eclipse, which is exact on the 23rd of October. And uh, interestingly enough, it's uh, exact at zero degrees of Scorpio in 23 minutes. So it's interesting how the 23's uh, merge together, 23 minutes, zero degrees, 23 minutes on the 23rd. And eclipses always bring about a intensification of energy. Uh, there's always something of a shadow nature to be dealt with. And also, there is a great opportunity for liberation when the solar eclipse comes about. So even though there is a facing of shadows, we have the opportunity to escort the shadows back into the light. Scorpio is an energy that represents death, regeneration, transformation, and a new moon is a conjunction of the sun and the moon, representing new beginnings. And so these are new beginnings that are earned by virtue of our addressing the shadows that are needing to be transcended. The sun and the moon are archetypes of relationship. They come together to reveal one another to each other. When the sun and the moon are conjunct, it's a strong representation of the relationship of the male and female principles that exist inside of you, inside of me, inside of all of us. And so, what is the new beginning energy that you're wanting? What do you want to create newly within your life? This energy of the solar eclipse can extend for several months, and the window of time that is most intense or most available to utilize from a premise of creation is the two, the two weeks that lead up to the actual full moon. So it takes two weeks for the moon to move from the new moon until the full moon. And during that time, it is waxing in its power. And so it is a time to be looking at what is the relationship that you have with yourself. What is the relationship that you have with the human aspect of who you are and the divine ascended aspect of who you are? And whatever the blockages are that have been attempting to be in the way of that is that which is to be transcended. The Mercury retrograde cycle which we're still in uh, for just a couple more days. Um, however, Mercury went retrograde at two degrees of Scorpio. So there's that Scorpio synergy. New moon, zero degrees of Scorpio. So there is uh, this amplification of some of the Mercury retrograde energy. There may be a reactivation of some of the lessons that are associated with the Mercury retrograde cycle, which of course is about looking deep inside of yourself and looking at the unfinished business. In my Rhythm of Scorpio, one of the poetic lines, I say, from dungeons of the scorpion sting to mountain top on eagle wings to regenerate light of dark undertakings and ordain death as life in the making. Death is always life in the making because in the infinite truth no matter how hard you try you can't die because that which is a resonance of life can never die. There can be the ending of a cycle 
to therefore make room for the beginning of a new cycle. And so death is simply a completion that makes room for a new beginning. So don't fight to hold on to the things that have outlived their usefulness in your life. The sun and the moon also represent the principle of father and mother. And so this may be a cycle wherein we're looking at what are the imprints that father and mother has had upon us that may longer or that may no longer be serving us. If we need to release and let go of. Because mama and daddy did the best that they could do it could do for where they were in their own evolvement. And they never did anything wrong, and yet just like all of us, they have their evolving to do as well. And so sometimes the imprint of father and mother has its level of challenge or difficulty. It's also a matter of looking at the inner father and mother. Like how are you in the expression of your inner fathering principle, your inner mothering principle. It is wise not to despise it use the dong to fertilize it for life's greatest connoisseur gets the best crops from the best manure and I say that because in the eclipse energy we're always having to address some of the shadows we can always transcend those shadows and we can make them servant unto us rather than allowing them to be master over us Another thing that is happening during this cycle is that there's a number of planets in the sign of Scorpio. Well, Saturn is in Scorpio, so uh, there is a matter of looking at where are we to be responsible. Because there is a synergy. Whatever's in Scorpio is going to somehow feed energy into this new moon solar eclipse. Saturn is always about responsibility, so we will be looking at what is our responsibility. And responsibility relative to who we are as a leader, the sun, responsibility to uh, who we are in our emotional expression, the moon. You know, it is a time that we will address some of the shadow emotions. It's also a time wherein we have the opportunity to overcome the fear of who we are as an emotional being. The emotional aspect of who we are is extremely important in that it connects to being. Our emotional nature is so close to our beingness because emotions are experiential. Therefore, they are a great access code to connection to source, to connection uh, with God. So it's important that we don't be afraid of who we are in our emotional makeup. We live in a world that sometimes tries to steer us away from being too emotional. You know, someone starts to cry and the average person sometimes says, oh, don't cry, you know, with the pretense being, I really care about you, don't cry. And many times they're actually saying, you're making me very uncomfortable, would you please stop crying? But the emotional part of who we are is an extremely important part of who we are. It's also a, a great catalyst for helping to bring about transformation. You know, emotions is also the food of thought. The lifespan of a thought is always determined by the amount of emotional energy that a thought is propelled with. If a thought is propelled with very little emotional energy, its lifespan is very short and its power is very small. If it's a great amount of emotional energy, it has a greater lifespan, it has a greater measure of power, and a greater magnetism to attract other thoughts of a like nature to accumulate and then eventually come into the crystallization of whatever the intention behind that thought was. Uh, the asteroid uh, Pallas Athena is also in Scorpio, and uh, Athena... Uh, had the relationship with the wise owl. And so there is uh, an opportunity to tap into wisdom. You know, using the wisdom of your beingness, the wisdom of that which God, Goddess, has planted inside of you to transcend whatever the shadow difficulties may 
happen to be. And Scorpio has a great deal to do with sexuality. We want to tap into the sacred sexuality. Sexuality is extremely important. One, uh, two of the things that people are so afraid of is power and sexuality, and yet those are ingredients that we absolutely need to be the powerful creators that we were meant to be. We need the energy of sexuality because the same energy that makes babies and brings erotic pleasure is the same energy that gives vitality to the body, heals the body, and creates everything. So if you got a lot of sexual juice, good. It's better to have the hots than not because then you have access to the force of creation. So this is a cycle wherein we may be looking at what some of the shadow pieces are around sexuality. The judgments that you may have about who you are as a sexual being or the judgments that you have uh, on others in their expression of sexuality. It's really important to know that if you judge yourself for who you are as a sexual being or how you use your sexual energy, or if you judge another being, that judgment becomes its own brand of sexual abuse because it is looking at sexual energy in a shadow way. And yes, there are abusive tendencies around sexual energy that exist within the world. And yet those abusive tendencies are not what defines sexual energy. Sexual energy is defined by sacredness, by beauty, by truth. And so you want to be at resonance with sacred sexuality. You want to be at resonance with erotic innocence. And you want to have a healthy relationship with your own sexual energy. And when I say a healthy relationship with that energy, it's how you resonate with it as you carry it within your own being. This is independent of anything that you are sexually doing with another being or whether you choose to be sexual with other beings at all. It is important to have a healthy relationship with sexual energy within your being because when you do, you have a great access to creation force and you are able to be the powerful creator that you are meant to be. There is an energy of invincibility associated with Scorpio. So you get to look at, you know, who are you in your capacity of being invincible? You know, or are you allowing things to penetrate your field that are unhealthy? Are you giving your power away? You know, desires have great intensity when we're dealing with scorpionic energy. It's important that we align with desires in a good way and that when we have desires, we have them in a way that we desire and we also have absolute faith in being able to fulfill those desires by virtue of understanding that they are already fulfilled in the intangible realm, which is the first stage of creation, a realm wherein human eyes don't see. And yet it is the first, it is the first stage of creation and the greater measure of creation. And then... Possessiveness, that's another shadow piece around Scorpio energy. You may be looking at, you know, uh, are you being possessive? Are you allowing others to be possessive with you? Are you giving your power away and letting yourself be possessed by the possessor? That's something we want to transcend also. This is a time when the intuition can become very, very sharp. The dream plane becomes more activated you can get major guidance through the dream plane. You can experience lucid dreams. And your power of magnetism can grow as long as you bring the resonance of light and divinity to the experiences. There is so much more about this solar eclipse new moon. And yet these are some very important pieces that I have shared with you. So work with those pieces. I am Astarius Miraculi. 
I love you with the passion of heaven, and I wish for you the best that the universe has to offer. My website is astarius.com, A-S-T-A-R-I-U-S dot com. I also do private sessions in psychic astrology as well as uh, healings with uh, didgeridoo and vocal harmonics and teach Reiki. If you have interest in private sessions, you can reach me at the number 928-254-9535 in the U.S., and I am located in Los Angeles, California. Aho ashe amen namaste hotep in lakesh alakin shalom satnam hariyom.